Thanks to Jovan for uh, introducing uh, the issues. I will try to frame uh, uh, a bit more in depth the actual challenges and questions we're trying to answer here. Uh, the aims of this uh, conference is not really to discuss and analyze only, welcome to Michelle, <laughs> uh, but also to uh, actually come together with some kind of joint guidelines you know, about what actually could inform proper standards you know, in this area. So, so we'll just frame what the challenges are and also try to give some <laughs> sample of what kind of outcome we really want tomorrow to have out of this conference. So the key issues that we're, we're faced with are um, that we think in, in, the, in the area of uh, um, security, privacy, and public safety in cyberspace and through cyberspace. Our number one is, is it feasible to build um, uh, services and relative standards uh, that uh, can give meaningful privacy and, and trustworthiness to a user? Perfect security and perfect privacy are impossible, and most likely will always be so. Nevertheless, it's essential to define arbitrarily some kind of limit by which the risks are acceptable for society. So nowadays, technologies, we're talking about the use within communications, are nowhere near to justify their use for freedom of speech, for communication, privacy, and uh, all those civil rights, civil communication rights. So that's a, 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 lim a limit that we're setting ar arbitrarily. We try to give a, 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 a more clear definition. And that's what we will be talking about. We want to talk about that kind of level. If that can be achieved, and if it can, how it can be achieved? What are the guidelines, paradigms, you know, high-level requirements that could you know, achieve that level? <clears throat> the level though, that we're um, discussing here, it's traditionally been relegated to military or high target users, it's called high assurance IT. So they're usually much simpler devices, uh, you know, very secretly developed uh, within uh, states and so on, just for very few, uh, uh, low number of users, which are supposedly safer. Now, uh, it's common, common knowledge that uh, oftentimes they're not that as safe as, as they, they're, they're, they're intended to be against, uh, you know, th their threat model, whatever they're defending against. Uh, the focus of this conference will be on devices of this sort that can supplement current devices. The assumption is that current uh, uh, commercial computing, like your cell phone or your PC, are just so complex in hardware and software, there is no way in the world that we'll ever be able to make them reach you know, meaningful levels of assurance. You can even have billions of euros but there's no way because one line can have a critical vulnerability and have undetectable compromisation, which is even scalably done through systems like uh, NSA Turbine or a hacking team uh, and, and similar systems. So that's what we will try to aim at. Um, we're also trying to look, once we kind of frame what these uh, ideas are, we're trying to understand what kind of scaling investments are needed. Many people dealing with eye assurance, they know that CPU is an issue. They know the fabrication, well, not all of them know that fabrication is an issue. I say, we just have to live with it. Why? Because current megafabs <laughs> are 10 to 14 billion euros uh, uh, and, uh, uh, enterprises with over 10,000 employees. And they manage very extremely valuable IP, hot uh, intellectual property. So having publicly verifiable oversight uh, no, that a user could trust within these environments would be incredibly costly and possibly even organizationally impossible and would breach a ton of IP. That's the problem. The other problem is that current modern CPUs, none of them uh, have designs which are publicly verifiable. And for those they do, their software and firmware is not verifiable. And, uh, and so also that is given as something that just cannot be solved. Some uh, uh, very knowledgeable speakers, one which will be talking today, have depicted, when talking about the problem of CPUs, uh, they talked about the fact that the only option we have is to pick our enemy. So basically, you have to kind of choose your technology and knowing that that technology has for sure holds for somebody. But we, we claim that possibly that is not the only option you have. Number two, that's not even a viable option because you're not even allowed to pick your en one enemy because you have no idea how many other enemies go in there. And so, uh, and so that's 
that's uh, uh, I think uh, we think a, a something that not is not uh, warranted. So what certification can enable a user to distinguish between them and other services? So we not only have to build this technology and build an ecosystem around it, but we need to have an independent, trustworthy certification process that an end user, be it an institution, a prime minister, or a single citizen, can actually assess as far as its quality. Of course, it, it's just so technically complicated, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't assess it directly. But you can assess what process led to the election of the people that actually uh, um, uh, organize, uh, actually is, are setting the standards, and how ethical they are, and how competent they are, because both are extremely high requirements for this. Challenge B is uh, uh, seemingly uh, unrelated, is uh, the uh, um, provided that we can solve challenge A, which is not a given, and uh, can we do so while at once maintaining uh, public safety and cyber investigation capabilities? Can we, we have one without the other? So the issue, the, the reason is that much of the you know, uh, complete debacle of high assurance IT, not to talk about commercial IT, has origin in the needs, uh, two major origins. One is the complexity of current systems, which always seeking new performance, better user experience of getting complexity, which is completely incompatible with any uh, no reasonable assurance. The second reason is that states have been investing hundreds of millions of dollars, or maybe billions over a few decades, exactly to break the life cycle of every single technology that got to market, at least in one spot. So once they break it and they have a few holes in there, and usually they also have a few legal authorities, I'm talking about here the US government, <laughs> Then they move on to others. So their task is to have no technology out there that can go to market that they cannot access if they want to. Or in some cases, they're authorized to legally. Some cases they are authorized, some cases they're not authorized, as we've seen. So since these investments are likely to continue, if we want any of these things to go to market, it would be preferable if we also find a way to let law enforcement with due legal authorization or even uh, mili military intelligence for terrorism or uh, state acts and so on, be able to access you know, the information of, of a user, which, for example, you cannot track. You know? And uh, so that's something which has been uh, in the activist community and, and secur IT security and activist community has, has been considered as uh, something impossible because it's something that would, would not be able to do with uh, the uh, required level of assurances. And uh, so it would place unacceptable risks of abuse. And uh, uh, however, we think that there are several different solutions that could uh, be put in place at the experimental level in certain domains, for example, within the same state, you know, within the same uh, uh, public administration. Uh, so basically, they could test it on themselves. So eat your own dog food. No? And so you could test these systems within the public administration to have transparency and accountability for public officials. And so that's, that's one thing. And there are many different uh, uh, tracks and, and ideas that we'll be discussing here. Uh, the reason why we're trying to solve this, even though it's highly risky and maybe not solvable issue, is that unless we solve challenge B, we may not ever be able to solve challenge A so that everybody can actually have it available. That's, that may or may not. You may still do it. And in fact, challenge A, we're aiming to do it even with present level of invest, investment of states and non-states to break it. So I, I, I went much, much further than I imagined. So I'm going to go much quicker now. Uh, what, what this uh, event is not about. Of course, you are, will, you are free to talk about uh, whatever you like in your uh, space, but uh, what we're not aiming at is suggesting law changes, uh, suggest changes in law or constitution. We, may we are looking at policy changes. Policy is a term that talks both about laws and also regulations within law. So if you, if you change a law in which you say uh, you should adhere with these kind of standards uh, or you are allowed to follow these standards, that, that's called policy. But we will be focusing on social technical certifications and certification bodies and governance. We're not trying to tackle the problem of, of privacy of modern commercial IT services, as I said before, because they, they are way 
way too complex to ever you know, have a chance to, uh, to do anything meaningful there. And they have infinite backdoor, infinite backdoor uh, um, through, I'm sorry, there's a, an error there, infinite backdoor through plausible deniability. For example, Apple, there's uh, problems with Apple that come all the time. And they can claim any time that was just an error they didn't know about or it was somebody else's error. There are millions and millions of code there. So they always can have plausible deniability for accidentally leaving back doors for the US government, Chinese government, and whoever else uh, no, is in there. So there is no way actually to, to, uh, no, to well, it's an important uh, area. It's something that should be done something about it to actually improve this, the, the level there. But we think that we're focusing on a different issue something which is meaningful. We're not aiming at small market niche or rich and powerful people. Currently, iAssurance IT is something that you have crypto phones that cost 3,000 euros, but those are the really bad ones. Well, there, there's a very different level you know, of um, crypto phones and also depends on who your enemy is, what your threat model is. But overall, on basically none of them give you assurance about what the CPU is doing about, about the fabrication and and many time, many other layers. So you just have to trust you know, what, what they're doing. And the fact that no one uh, has been uh, breached, how, the, how do you know? I mean, the, the whole goal of having a backdoor is not having the user discover it and keep it there for 10 years. That is exactly the task of the backdoors you know, for high assurance systems. So we're looking to have something that can actually scale and every user can have, and also as far as price. So something that can. Once experimented, everyone can use in the civilian or every, even uh, in, in uh, the military sector, you know, uh, you know, missions, and so all areas where society needs assurance. Um, we're not promoting the adoption of free software uh, privacy tools. Uh, I'm sorry, instead of privacy, it should be private, you know, privacy device setup. So currently, there's a lot of IT uh, and IC, um, uh, security and privacy experts which are promoting the use of free software tools which are widely available like Tails and Tor and so on and so forth. And these tools are, um, are, are great initiatives from an ethical point of view. But they're mostly, you know, possibly, focused on uh, systems which are way too complex for the resources available. So either these, uh, these communities attract 100 times the resources they have or they should be focusing on uh, systems which are way less complex and uh, and in fact uh, it's uh, no their the weakness is can cannot be widely uh, acknowledged uh, this is just a sample and i mean we'll just go right very quickly on this slide so we are we as we see, saw on slide uh, 1 challenge a we're looking for concrete answers so tomorrow i hope all of you will stay, stay here and we'll have even more involvement of the audience we really welcome some of the postdocs that are here we talk to them and so on to actually come out with some uh, general guidelines, and possibly we can even uh, look at having online some kind of documents that could be signed on some in, a, in the next weeks. That it could look something like this. It could be something that describes general high-level guidelines of uh, what a, what a service, uh, a, high, a service that has meaningful uh, assurance, could look like. So, for example, it should uh, assume. It should assume that there are uh, you know, actors with tens of millions of euros willing to break it. So if this system will go to market and it's really the best thing out there and uh, a lot of people can get it and anybody can get it and pass it on, then we'll, there will be a focus of these agencies to break it because that's the thing that it, they don't have to break. So they need to be resilient to that. That may seem impossible at the beginning, but you look at democracy, Demo democratic electoral systems. You have uh, five randomly selected people when you go to vote. And somehow, that's even if you have uh, people with tens of millions of euros willing to uh, co compromise it, they can't because they need to you know, corrupt five different people and so on. It becomes complicated. So there are processes that could be put in place to prevent this through transparent process and other things we learn through military you know, uh, you know, uh, critical systems or democratic systems for accountability, for oversight. Uh, so we, we could look at extremely accountable oversight of all the hardware, software, and, or, and organizational processes which are critically involved. In IT systems, if you have extensive use of compartmentalization, so isolating critical from non-critical uh, actions, then you don't need to go crazy in every, every single line, every single component, which is trustworthy. You can focus on a subset. 
that makes it easier and more manageable. Auditing. So a, a key thing, as we said already before, is to uh, I keep messing with this. There you go. A key thing is to have in auditing. A key a key concept is uh, uh, the, the the ratio of auditing relative to complexity. So the thing is, either you reduce complexity or increase auditing. It's, it's the ratio that is key here. And not only is the intensity of the audit, but also the, the ethical intention. Why that? Because you could pay like, a bunch of crackers, you know, uh, tens of millions of euros to uh, actually help you make it safer, and they could get you know, some more money from another agency, and they get two, two checks, and they just you know, look for making holes instead of uh, helping you. So that's why the ethical drive and background is important. And we'll talk about, you know, connect this with the free software community and why it's crucial to involve that because that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, uh, gathers a lot of uh, uh, very important and you know, uh, very ethically oriented people and some of them have the skills levels that can help in high assurance systems with these goals. Uh, clear and low long-term royalties. If you, have, if you have systems which need to be end-to-end, -end, you need not to have an actor which can, uh, with a patent or with, a, with a, a crucial IP as far as licensing, hello, uh, Pierre, uh, can break the ecosystem. So a company with a key uh, software stack could be bought by uh, a venture capital by CIA and, and the whole uh, system can't work. Or patents should, could be applied that could prevent you from going to market. Or you could have uh, you know, some stacks of the software which are proprietary and, uh, and uh, the owner of this, that, uh, that uh, IP could ask you 10 times more next year, right? And so that's where licensing, it's crucial to create an ecosystem that can survive the pressure we talked about because the tens of millions of euros are not only for subversion, which is legally authorized or non-legally authorized, but it's through economical means. Buying out companies that are trying to, uh, creating something meaningful and they invent, and there's, there are venture capital uh, you know, from CIA, one is uh, in QTEL and so on. It's public, it's publicly known. And uh, and uh, US government has secret patents. Uh, no? I, I don't know if, uh, how many of you know that they have secret patents. So, so they are valid, but they're not known. But then they can come to you and say, hey, I have a patent, so you're illegally you know, going uh, and breaching my patent. And the NSA has tons of this. OK, I'm going, uh, I'm going to close up here. Then, of course, there's requirements that have to do with crypto systems. Crypto systems are mostly a solved issue. Now there are uh, uh, mostly because, I mean, uh, it, 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 there are available you know, proper ways to do crypto systems which are uh, uh, safe and well done, and there's experience, and there are protocols and algorithms which are uh, longstanding. There's new issues about quantum computing, so there are things that, that should be gradually implemented within, uh, within certifications. So that's something that you should not worry too much now, but you should have a path, an actionable path towards quantum resistance as far as uh, crypto systems there. Uh, and possibly the most crucial uh, element in which all of this relies is have an extremely technically proficient and user accountable certification body because how do, you, how do you ensure all of this and much more than we'll discuss about? You need to have a certification body that is competent enough and uh, accountable to citizens enough, and so the interest of citizens and not their you know, economical interest and so on, to be able to have you know, uh, you know, standards which are suitable and sustainable in time, because we, it needs to also sustain in time and not degenerate in its technical quality and ethical quality.